Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm John. The program Brown. is supposed you, to Can you put your, ca your camera on, please? There you are. Hi. <laughs> how you doing? Good, good. So how are things in Chandrahar? Chandrahar. No, no, you're not there. He's Manjul's there, right? Manjul. Manjul is in uh, Chandigarh. So Chandigarh. I'm in Bangalore. You're in Bangalore? Yeah. Okay. I've been to Nepal. Oh, yeah. I've been there too. <laughs> yeah, three, three months. Wow. Three months in um, Bharat, Bharatnagar, Bharatnagar, in the eastern part of Nepal. Bharatnagar, yeah, Bharatnagar, yeah. How far are you, uh, Bang, how far is, Bang, I know India is a big, big country. How far is it from Chan, Chandrigarh? Bang. Uh, if you're going flight, it'll take some three, two, three and a half hours. Yeah, India is like the United States is big. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not around the corner. Someone will say, oh, you're from India. Do you know somebody? <laughs> I know some from India too. <laughs> yeah, there are only uh, one crore 30, sorry, 130 crore people in India. So <laughs> I know everybody. <laughs> Have you been traveling much at all? Or no, it's not, not in the recent people. past. Not in the recent past. Yeah. Yeah, I think things are going to change a little bit. We're not going to travel around as much for a while. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. it's that way here. It seemed to get better. It's not really getting bad, but it's it's not getting better, much, much better. As far as um, people's desire to travel. So yeah, you just uh, Oh, you know what you're doing. Just give a presentation, and uh, hopefully we'll get some a few people. Mm -hmm. So, I how many we'll, people? I think uh, we'll get a few. They'll come along as time goes on. Yeah, you've done. How many people done, do you expect uh, to attend? Oh, I'm sorry. How many people do you expect to uh, attend? Like, how many people were there? Oh, no, the less last than day? ten. If we get, if we get that many. Okay. I'll be happy if we get ten. Uh, but uh, we'll see.
That's fine. Have you done any webcasts? You've done with Zoom before, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, I've done. Yeah, I've, I've done. I used to do a lot of webcasts from Nepal. That's where oh. I first started doing them. I ran into a uh, live cherry, and he's a he's a mostly a trauma guy. Have you heard? He's in. Um, he's back in uh, India right now. Yeah, yeah, he's back. Yeah, okay. So you know what? He he, he uh, does a lot of teaching on the internet. Yeah, yeah. We did a lot of, a lot of webinars. Yeah, he's down in um, Kerala, Kerala, Kerala. He is basically from Kerala, but right now he's practicing somewhere in uh, Maharashtra, somewhere, probably. Like that's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. So you've been to Pokhara, like uh, Pokhara in uh, Nepal. Pokhara is a place. Uh, it's a good place in Nepal where most of the hiking starts from. So it's good, a good place in Nepal. I've, I've been a few, I've done a few hikes in Nepal, like Annapurna, Annapurna base camp and stuff. So Nepal is a good country. Okay, okay. Hold on, let me. Uh... Just give me a second. Manju is trying to get in here. Uh, eating a little bit by day. Oh. Yeah, man, Jules coming in. The day is for us. Today's Friday, right? Did you, uh, you had your office today? I was in the outpatient uh, clinic so far. Like I had just to, I had to leave that and come for this. <laughs> Oh, okay. A busy day? Very much. The busiest day of the week is <laughs> Friday, <I> was <laughs> for me at least. Okay. No, I, I was, I do a lot of webcasts in neurosurgery, but I was. You know, everyone constantly referred to Gamma Knife for doing this uh, because they can't do surgery or whatever, whatever. And I didn't know what Gamma Knife was. I, of course, I heard of it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you, as you know, if you talk to most neurosurgeons, they, they really don't have a good idea. Of it. Okay, here's Mitchell. So I hope we can enlighten them. Uh, yeah, definitely. Basically, on what it is, because they're offering their patients the option, but they don't know what it is, <laughs> and they don't know the latest indications when it should be used, and what area. Hello, Manjul. What areas has been improved? Manjul's on, hey, on the road. How you doing, Manjul? I'm good, John. How are you doing? Good. Is it is it safe to do that? Realize. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Will you be it's, it's, arriving? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm you going to be in transit mostly. You're basically going to introduce non-shed. Just... No, I, I'll be I'll be home in the next five to ten minutes. I'll be home in next film. I think by the time John Nishanta starts, I'll be there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nishant. Nishant. Yeah. Nishant. Nishant is a close friend and uh, he's a wonderful drama neck surgeon and a micro surgeon in Nimans. Thank you. <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the reality. Nishant, you are already in Scrubs, huh? So we are in Scrubs most of most days, recent past after COVID. Okay. Like not everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, easier to change, especially in the COVID so, times. Uh, you are in. O no, yeah, no, I just had to. So come, you are in OT uh, or in your. I just had to come to given. the quarters for this. <laughs> I had to leave the OPD and come. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It was your OPD today, yes. Yeah. How is the weather there, Nishant? I'll be there tomorrow. Oh, weather is uh, very nice. Weather is very nice. It's Can I cool, wear a coat? Cool breeze. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's good. That, that's good. That's good. Morning, uh, and how far is... had come. So he was telling, uh, okay. he was very astonished by this. Are yeah, like uh, how beautiful it is here. <laughs> and all you have to be. <laughs> Oh, he was coming from Delhi, which is actually boiling yeah. these days. One second. It's too humid. How is the weather at your place, John? Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful time of year in Miami. It's, it's sunny. It's I don't know if it gets very humid. <laughs> where you guys are at, but Miami gets very humid. Do you know what I mean? It gets, yeah, uh, yeah, I know. I, I definitely know. It's, I think at part my of place, India. it was, yeah, the, especially the coastal areas. And in this weather, even my place, Chandigarh gets humid. So the humidity was 70% a couple of days earlier. Yeah, it's horrible in Miami. I mean, yeah. when, I, when you first... Uh, I first moved here like 20 years ago. I mean, it took me a long time to get adapted. Long time to get to the high humidity. I have never been to there. I have never been to Miami. But I hope one day. My, my introduction to Miami was because of uh, Scarface. Oh yeah, yeah. Every, I mean, watch every, the most of the world, uh, <laughs> that's their, uh, that's the first. Uh, but you know that movie was filmed partly here. Mostly, it's filmed in Los Angeles. But there are parts I recognize uh, still. It made uh, and Miami Vice put Miami on the map too. That was uh, yeah, the cr crime crime series you guys probably saw when you were younger. Uh, yeah, they really uh, put Miami on the map as far as tourism. But uh, uh, three, we'll start. We'll start, but don't worry. People will come as as we go along. Okay. Okay. And and, and education is needed in this in this field. So uh, let's let's start as we. Okay, uh, I'm going to introduce you, Manjul, and then you introduce. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take you off the screen there first, okay? Because we want to see your face sure. first, and then you can go to the screen share, okay, uh, Nishan? Yeah, yeah. Got it. After after Manjul introduce you, you. 
Okay, let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting for a new channel, Gamma Knife TV. Uh, I ran into Manjul Tripathi and he shared the same views of this area of neurosurgery needing education. I know that I need it. I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I know uh, a lot of neurosurgeons could use kind of a brush up on what's going on and, and uh, the changing indications, uh, et cetera. And uh, we'll let Manjul run the show. Good day, Manjul. Hello, Manjul, are you there? Oh, I guess he maybe screen froze. Really, Just really excited to have a second talk to you. Are you there? Yeah, Manjil? yeah, yeah, John. He's speaking, he's speaking. Yeah, John. Yeah, yeah, John. Am I audible to you? Yeah, okay. Could you please introduce John. your guest? Good day, John. Good day. And I am sincerely, sincerely very excited today to have our second webinar today. And uh, I, I feel this is a wonderful opportunity to introduce our terrific neurosurgeon and young gamma knife radiosurgeon, uh, Nishant. Nishant uh, uh, is an additional professor at the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences. That's a tertiary care institute, uh, which houses uh, the recent uh, Lexel gamma knife icon. He practices over there. Nishant has been recipient of uh, several awards and uh, he has done his fellowship, the last Lexel fellowship also. Um, for the gamma knife radio surgery. So, uh, without wasting much time, uh, I would uh, into, I would uh, request Nishant to uh, uh, detail the role of the gamma knife radio surgery in the management of uh, intracanalicular vestibular schwannomas and the larger ones too. And it would be a holistic picture. And the role of gamma knife radio surgery Nishant? Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your kind introduction. Like, uh, if I'm all set, I'll start to uh, share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, it's visible, Nishant. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, the kind introduction, uh, both John and Manjul. Uh, so uh, it's been a pleasure uh, uh, speaking in this uh, forum, uh, the newly uh, started uh, Gamma Knife TV. So uh, I'll be speaking about Gamma Knife radio surgery uh, for vestibular schwannoma on uh, in a holistically. Uh, so if you see uh, the literature uh, about Gamma Knife or uh, any radio surgical procedure. Uh, it's like usually the uh, the history of uh, stereotactic uh, methods of uh, radiation delivery starts from Lexel. Even though stereotactic procedures, the methodology was initially started by Horsley and Clark from 1908. Uh, uh, Lexel was the guy who pushed forward the uh, holistic uh, approach of uh, radio surgical procedures, especially in uh, neurosurgical uh, indications. Uh, initially, the uh, gamma knife was done with uh, various uh, models. Initially, started with uh, Lexel, and then the latest is Icon, where the, there are 190 to 192 sources. All uh, all the sources throw beams, which uh, confine to a very small uh, center, which can be 4 mm, 12 mm, or 8 mm, or 16 mm. Uh, patient is in and out of the treatment within a day, which is uh, very helpful for patients who like to be ambulant. So it's a team approach. Uh, mainly uh, the leader of the team will be neurosurgeon, which is uh, uh, who, are, who is helped by radiation oncologist, physicist, nurse, and radiation technologist. So generally, if you see uh, literature search in PubMed about gamma knife radio surgery, you see more than 20,000 articles. That means to say that there is a lot of... Uh, 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 interest in uh, radio surgery as well as gamma knife uh, per se and uh, the evidence base for uh, giving gamma knife is huge and if you search gamma knife and the vestibular schwannoma you get more than 1200 articles which tells the amount of literature available in support of uh, gamma knife to vestibular schwannomas so uh, if you see uh, 
the if you compare different radio surgery approaches like gamma knife cyber knife line act as well as proton beam the maximum amount of uh, uh, literature which is available is for gamma knife uh, whether you take uh, for meningiomas vestibular schwannomas or any other uh, intracranial tumors per se and uh, over uh, over years throughout the world i think uh, vestibular schwannoma should be uh, first or second uh, leading uh, indication for gamma knife radio surgery especially in the developing world uh if you take a developed world maybe uh, metastasis might lead the list but uh, overall in the world as well as uh, developing world the uh, meningioma or vestibular schwannoma takes the lead in the indications for uh, gamma knife we can see here over time at least more than one fourth of the indications for uh, uh, gamma knife has been vestibular schwannoma which is the data data taken from lexel lexel gamma knife society uh, treatment statistics report which is published every year so coming to uh, vestibular schwannoma in particular it is a, a very frequent cp angle tumor frequently encountered in neurosurgical centers uh, usually present with uh, hearing problems vestibular dysfunctions like dizziness and vertigo uh, then comes with uh, trigeminal sensory loss and then facial palsy can occur rarely so uh, bigger tumors if they grow big they indent the cerebellum brain stem and cause fourth ventricular distortion can cause severe ataxia as well as cause hydrocephalus which might need csf diversion procedures so initially uh, the main goal of the treatment uh, if you uh, see the history books of neurosurgery was uh, to make patient survive so if the if the patient survives surgery like that was uh, termed to be accomplishment so later as advancements in uh, technology as well as neurosurgical procedures uh, uh, came on like we have tried to avoid any complications we have tried to preserve uh, facial nerve during surgery and uh, in the recent past we have been striving hard to preserve hearing also in case of vestibular schwannoma which is very hard to do so traditionally traditionally speaking in the present uh, uh, era the small uh, vestibular schwannoma like most people still tell that they can wait and watch a medium sized tumor uh, people tell that radio surgery can be given or micro surgery can be done and most tum- most people tell that large vestibular schwannoma need uh, surgery micro surgery so in the recent past especially in the last 20 years there has been a boom of indications for radio surgery especially in vestibular schwannoma so why in the present era vestibular schwannoma treatment is predominantly uh, dominated by radio surgery because it causes cessation of tumor growth in many cases it causes tumor size regression and first of all like there is no surgery there is open uh, it's not an open procedure and there is no uh, uh, complication which can happen with uh, open surgery and in majority of the cases it maintains cranial nerve function which is very difficult to achieve during surgery and uh, in fact improvement of patient symptoms which may be uh, tinnitus or hearing loss can happen with radio surgery so if you see how we do radio surgery there are a uh, few general principles of radio surgery like we usually put uh, a head frame on the head of the patient and then uh, we put a, a fiducial box on the head then take the patient to a mri scanner we do a scan with the head frame and the fiducial box and we, which gives a stereotactic reference for localization of the tumor within the uh, stereotactic space and then we plan the uh, dose to the tumor with uh, putting multiple shots where it has to be and uh, to make sure that a minimum spillage of uh, radiation happens to the surrounding uh, uh, critical structures and the radiation is delivered with the patient inside the uh, gamma knife chamber uh, where 190 different sources all around uh, uh, the chamber like uh, focuses the radiation only to the tumor with very minimal spillage of the radiation to the surrounding tissue so we should know when we choose gamma knife that 30 to 70% of vestibular uh, schwannomas are known to grow over time the maximum diameter which to which it can grow is up to 3 mm per year and uh, recent studies have found that over time if we don't treat a patient 50 more than 50% of the patient lose their hearing even if the hearing is intact when uh, the tumor was found they eventually lose hearing whether you treat or not treat but i will go to that uh, in a few or a few slides 
So what does the literature tell about conservative management of uh, Vishwabhash nanomass? We should know, as I already told, uh, majority, like many patients have uh, up to 3 mm growth. In this uh, large study, it was found that up to uh, 30, 39 of the 390 patients had uh, growth of tumor more than 3 mm per year. That means uh, almost 10% of tumors have grown more than 3 mm. And uh, if you see the study, which is underlined, conservative management was discontinued in almost 25% of the cases, of, he, of whom 12-month follow-up data was available. Surgery is performed in majority of the cases. So this is an era where like radiation treatment, uh, gamma ray was not so uh, popular, and hence these patients underwent radio surgery as well. So in the present era, these patients would get uh, treated because as you've seen 24% discontinued and had shown growth or had symptoms for which they needed treatment. So what about uh, growth in vestibular schwannomas if we uh, manage conservatively? Like uh, it's a prospective study uh, which showed that uh, volume doubling time uh, after treatment was uh, 1.36 years uh, compared to 13 years if it is not treated. For example, if you give gamma knife, the doubling time is only uh, 1.36 years. But uh, if you give, uh, if you don't give gamma knife, if you give gamma knife, the doubling time is uh, 13 years. That means it slowed down uh, the growth of the tumor after uh, giving radiation. So what about wait and see strategy? Like uh, we have to see uh, here in this table that whenever wait and see strategy was uh, uh, taken, the functional hearing preservation had drastically reduced compared to proactive uh, gamma knife uh, uh, treatment. Like if we had given proactive gamma knife treatment, uh, almost 60% had intact hearing at five years compared to only 14% in patients who didn't take any treatment and wait and see strategy was uh, seen. So that means that, so gamma knife giving proactively for patients who preserve hearing uh, can save the hearing for a longer time than if you don't. So like several people have uh, made their own charts and indications about how to go about in a newly diagnosed vestibular schwannomas. Most charts look like this, but it's not uh, very accurate. Uh, but overall, I can tell that a small vestibular schwannomas, whether it is intact hearing or without intact hearing, uh, gamma naif radiation should be a better choice. And it ha as compared to any other modality of treatment, it is... Uh, a best practice of uh, neurosurgery uh, would indicate that radio surgery uh, for a smaller vestibular schwannoma is the best choice uh, for treatment. So, if we see hearing preservation over time uh, compared to uh, no treatment, uh, we can tell that hearing preservation uh, rate in a large study by Yang et al. It was found that. 51% of patients had uh, uh, who had uh, longer uh, uh, follow-up had preserved hearing compared to uh, which uh, who did not uh, get uh, uh, gamma net treatment. So this is one case where uh, we actually had followed up a small incidental vestibular schwannoma. Uh, we followed up uh, over years for about three years and drastically there was uh, growth in tumor as well as dip in the hearing sensitivity uh, speech threshold. Uh, which eventually we found out that like uh, the proactive gamma knife was better. So gamma knife was given at uh, for this patient at a later date. Like initially, like in 2015, we didn't give uh, radiation. At 2018, when the patient's hearing was lost, as well as uh, the growth was there, we gave gamma knife. So what about... Uh, uh, giving radio surgery over time. For example, in our case, we gave uh, radio surgery after three years. So that is a wrong uh, practice. So early radio surgery is the best choice with this uh, uh, evidence. In this study, uh, they had uh, proved that earlier you give radio surgery after diagnosis, the better is the hearing preservation. So they have found that at four uh, years follow-up after radio surgery, early treatment, Patients who got radio surgery within two years of uh, diagnosis, 51% have preserved hearing. A late treatment after two years of uh, uh, finding out the patient had a vestibular schwannoma. So at follow-up of four years, patients only 29% had preserved hearing. That means over time, if the uh, hearing loss happens, that means that the long-term uh, hearing preservations go down 
the longer you wait. So even uh, hearing classification, that's what uh, I mentioned earlier, that worse the hearing, worse is the hearing outcome after radio surgery. That's what is shown in this uh, 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 study also. So over time, the speech discrimination score uh, goes down drastically more uh, in patients who had worse hearing than patients who have better hearing. So what about patients who have very high uh, hearing uh, levels or completely normal hearing? So this is uh, a very uh, tricky area where like we have to make sure that the cochlear dose which we prescribe has to be less than four. And this specific uh, study, it was found that less than three gray was required to uh, maintain normal cochlear function for a long time after radio surgery. So uh, this, this is another study where uh, hearing uh, was assessed for a patients who had a smaller vestibular schwannomas with intact hearing. So three uh, uh, indicators like the pre-gamma knife uh, uh, speech uh, audiometry like, uh, and then uh, speech discrimination as well as uh, dose to cochlea were the most important factors which uh, indicated that cochlea functions can be preserved for a long time after radio surgery. So another uh, point is that annual decrease in uh, hearing. For example, a patient who uh, you give uh, uh, radio surgery, like before radio surgery, there can be a, a gradual decline in hearing. So that hearing decline, if you don't give radio surgery, is about 5.4 decibel per year. But if you give radio surgery after uh, uh, a certain point of time, the rate in which uh, hearing loss happens also decreases. That decreased to 3.77 decibel per year. That means that early post, uh, early gamma knife decreases the rate in which hearing loss happens every year. So this is a retrospective study which we did in our uh, center where uh, we had the 87 patients with uh, class one and class two uh, Gardner robertson uh, hearing. Uh, we had a follow-up of uh, median of uh, 30 months the tumor control rate at the end of uh, medium 30 months was around uh, 96%, with hearing preservation rate at the end of follow-up was almost 80%. We found out that uh, age more than 40 years, pre-gamma knife uh, uh, pure tone audiometry of less than 30 decibels with speech discrimination score of uh, more than 85% and a better hearing uh, was associated with a better outcome of hearing. The mean, we had tried to keep uh, the mean cochlear dose to uh, less than four gray for all cases. So that was another uh, uh, point which uh, favored uh, cochlear preservation over time. So we have spoken about the small vestibular schwannomas where good hearing is still present, uh, how we can go about uh, uh, treatment. So we have concluded that okay, like small vestibular schwannomas with intact hearing, we have to give gamma knife uh, to preserve hearing. So a patient with uh, progressive decline in hearing, we have to give gamma knife to decrease the progression of hearing loss. A patient with lost hearing, like we have to give gamma knife so that the tumor doesn't grow much. So that is a, so basically all patients who have a small gamma knife, we have to give a uh, small tumor, we have to give gamma knife, especially with uh, more than 25% of people have growth of more than three mm per year. That means that a lot of patients have growth of vestibular schwannomas. We have to give proactive treatment for those patients. What about medium-sized vestibular schwannomas? So uh, like medium-sized vestibular schwannomas, most neurosurgeons would indicate both uh, management strategies are good enough, but I would beg to decline. Uh, like you can show, uh, if anybody shows any neurosurgeon who have 100% facial preservation rate, or very good hearing preservation rate, I would decline my uh, proposal, but uh, no neurosurgeon can tell that like they can have 100% facial preservation rate. So with very good outcome of radio surgery in medium-sized vestibular schwannomas, it is very imperative to tell that uh, vestibular schwannoma uh, treatment with radio surgery is very safe. And usually almost 95 to 100% of the patient have intact facial nerve functions uh, at the end of radio surgery and follow up for about five to 10 years. That means like cranial nerve dysfunction usually is a very rare occurrence after uh, radio surgery for gamma knife, even in 
medium sized vestibular schwannomas so very uh, very high uh, amount of people who underwent uh, micro surgery had uh, uh, both hearing loss uh, as well as uh, uh, morbidity compared to uh, radio surgery that's what is shown in this uh, paper so if there is incidentally detected or symptomatic small or medium sized vestibular schwannomas if it is has normal hearing like we have to give radio surgery if it is affected but serviceable hearing loss we have to give radio surgery because like we have we want to preserve long term hearing with a non serviceable hearing loss or lost hear lost hearing we have to give radio surgery so that it doesn't grow what about goose grade 1 and grade 2 which is like medium sized vestibular schwannoma like the previous study showed that radio surgery is better compared to micro surgery but what about goose grade 3 and grade 4 which are considered to be slightly higher or larger vestibular schwannoma so even for larger vestibular schwannoma there are several uh, papers and studies which have shown that with carefully selected patients it can be a reasonably good option for treating uh, patients with uh, small and medium and uh, larger vestibular schwannoma so the actuarial uh, tumor control rates in this study was uh, around 95% at 2 years and 92% at 10 years which is like very good and uh, serviceable hearing preservation rate was uh, almost 89% at 2 years and 49% at 5 years so like uh, like no neurosurgeon can tell that he can preserve hearing uh, for a goose grade 4 vestibular schwannoma because the bigger the tumor the worse is the hearing outcome especially with micro neuro surgery so that means like it is uncomparable compared uh, when we uh, compare hearing preservation uh, between micro surgery and uh, radio surgery with very good hands with uh, uh, extremely skilled neurosurgeon the facial nerve preservation can be same but uh, it's not a real world scenario where uh, for a regular neurosurgeon even in a high volume center a uh, facial nerve preservation rate is not comparable to uh, micro neuro surgery so there are multiple uh, uh, studies which shown that tumor control rate is very good even with vestibular schwannoma bigger vestibular schwannoma some state that uh, like if it is more than 8 cc the failure rate is high in this study it was stated that more than 15 cc uh, the failure rate is high uh, but we have done our own study in uh, our uh, department like where uh, we had uh, 34 patients of large vestibular schwannoma with a mean volume of 10.87 cc at a median uh, uh, follow up of uh, 30 months we had follow up and we gave approximately 12 gray uh, radiation uh, for all these patients uh, so patient the size of the tumor had significantly reduced in 15% of the patients it was stable in 41 patients increased in size happened in 3 patients and uh, which is uh, which amounts to 9% and new deficits happened in 15% of the uh, patients of which four had to undergo radio uh, uh, undergo surgery so tumor control rate at the end of follow up was 88% which is reasonably uh, uh, is good this is how a uh, uh, response can happen to uh, radio surgery uh, for treatment of large vestibular schwannoma over time you can see there is internal necrosis and gross reduction of the tumor but after about 5 years of follow up the size of the tumor has remained the same so the larger the tumor like i feel that uh, personally feel that we need a very long follow up to tell that a radio surgery has been successful but uh, that's what like even uh, late failures are noted in such cases so a univariate analysis of failures which showed that a patient who has ataxia for example a large tumor who has a compression on the brain stem or uh, cerebellum and causing gait ataxia symptomatically those patients tend to fail radio surgery because like uh, obviously over time uh, the the tumor edema can cause more symptoms which will be an indication to do surgery and cause failure of the amani if a gait ataxia is combined with any of the uh, cranial nerve dysfunction over time that is also uh, had a poor prognosis so like these are uh, some examples of patients who had failure of gamma ray in patients with large vestibular schwannomas uh, the, in the above panel we can we can see that over time there is there is a large necrotic area but this patient had worsening of the symptoms severe uncontrolled trisomy neuralgia as well as ataxia for which patient underwent surgery 
In the lower panel, we can see that uh, this tumor had a perilegional cyst uh, for which patient had uh, severe ataxia and cranial dis nerve dysfunction for which this patient had to undergo surgery. Rarely, uh, we have also reported a patient where immediately after gamma nerve, there is hemorrhage of uh, uh, hemorrhage inside the tumor, uh, which is very rare. Like we had uh, reported one uh, case like that, which eventually required surgery. Uh, but in a typical case where a medium to large size vestibular schwannomas, this is a typical response. Initially, there will be uh, necrotic changes. Sometimes the volume might increase. But over time, the, uh, even though the uh, contrast uptake increases, the volume decreases over time. And it remains dormant after about five years. Like usually the tumors won't shrink after five years. So it remains dormant after five years. This uh, I already showed. This is a large tumor which, uh, with a very good response at around uh, seven years of follow-up. These are the typical uh, uh, response of patients which show internal necrosis initially and then increase in contrast uptake, but still the volume has remained the same or it has decreased in size over time. This is the same. And this is like a, a small vestibular schwannoma with uh, moderate uh, sensory neural hearing loss, uh, typical ice, ice, cone, uh, ice cream cone shaped uh, tumor. Uh, which has gradually increased, uh, decreased in size and even only intracanalicular part is left behind at the end of three years follow-up. So the importance of gamma knife in treating such patients is that like it has a very high uh, amount of dose follow-up follow uh, around the tumor. See, for example, in this case, the yellow line depicts the 12 gray line, which is a treatment volume of this patient. The red line is the marked treatment volume the yellow line is the dose delivered. And if you can see the surrounding uh, green lines, you can see that the two gray line is hardly encompassing half a centimeter around the tumor. That is how the steep the dose fall off is. That's one of the important aspects in which you choose radio surgery, especially gamma knife radiation compared to any other radio surgery techniques. So with this, I would, uh, want to conclude my uh, talk, uh, like basically I would like to uh, tell that in this present era, uh, a case with uh, vestibular schwannoma uh, can be managed with uh, uh, gamma nef radio surgery very safely. The safety is uh, at most uh, when I tell that uh, the option of giving, before giving gamma, uh, gamma nef as an option for a patient, so uh, it is very safe. Cranial nerve dysfunction after radio surgery is uh, very rare, uh, except hearing loss, which can happen over time. But uh, facial nerve dysfunction is almost unheard of, uh, and it is very rare for, to have a cranial nerve dysfunction. Uh, in the initial uh, period, where uh, around uh, one and a half decades earlier, where 14 gray to 15 gray radiation was given uh, to vestibular schwannomas, the uh, cranial nerve dysfunction uh, used to happen. Uh, at around 20 to 30%, which is quite high. When uh, we have titrated the dose to around the 12 gray uh, for treatment, so the, uh, the complication rates of cranial nerve dysfunction have drastically reduced, and it is almost negligible now, uh, except that hearing loss can happen, uh, which is better compared to a natural course of uh, the patient. A special mention about uh, uh, radio surgery uh, in uh, neurofibromatosis patients. Uh, even in neurofibromatosis patients, the response has been very good uh, in literature. Uh, we have limited experience with neurofibromatosis patients. Uh, but uh, whenever there is uh, a loss of hearing, like uh, that would be a first choice. Or if there is a gradual deterioration of hearing also, like uh, it's a reasonable indication for uh, gamma knife in cases of neurofibromatosis as well. So with this, uh, I would uh, like to end my talk. And if there are any uh, doubts or uh, anything, like I'm open for uh, discussion. Thanks, thanks, Nishant. Uh, am I audible, John? Yes. yes. Go ahead, Manjul. Thanks, thanks, Nishant. It's, it was a wonderful presentation. It was actually a good overview of uh, uh, a paradigm shift in the management of the vestibular schwannoma. So I remember the articles which 
explain uh, the enucleation technique of the Charles balance and then gradually it improved to an intracapsular dissection by Dendy. And then uh, we first started from life-saving surgery to the nerve-preserving surgery. And now we are actually avoiding a surgical knife. We are just giving the gamma knife to do surgery. So these days, uh, most of the times, we are getting an early discovery of vestibular schwannomas. If we go to the earlier literature, we find that those were the giant vestibular schwannomas which people used to present in the OPDs and uh, causing the cerebral symptoms, cataraxia and all those. Uh, partly because of introduction of mobile phones, we are able to discover the patients are symptomatic earlier than before. They are able to find a difference between both the ears and then MRI picks it up. So there are so many incident lowers. Uh, wait and watch versus observation for a small vestibular schwannoma. That remains a very important uh, matter of discussion, uh, practically a matter of debate. So if you consider uh, radio surgery versus stereotactic radiation therapies and fractionation, when the long-term hearing preservation is the goal, what is your opinion on that? What should be a so, better option? Uh, there are uh, many studies which have shown very good results with uh, fractionated radiation. It's uh, They have shown good results, but if you compare with radio surgery, uh, it's almost equal. It's like, uh, you, uh, it's almost equal than, it, it might be a bit better, but if you can compare the, uh, the ease in which radio surgery is given compared to fractionation. Uh, if you give a choice of those two for a pay for any patient, I feel that uh, radio surgery would be a better choice. As well as uh, if you see uh, a hearing a hearing loss is one of the uh, factors which matter. But if you compare uh, tumor control rates over time, uh, tumor control rates are better with. Uh, uh, with radio surgery compared to fractionation, even though they state that it's comparable. Uh, if you see the minor details that uh, the, the tumor control rate is good in radiation, radio surgery compared to uh, fractionated radiation therapies. So uh, with the added uh, risk of radiation to the surrounding tissue, which is very important, uh, and you're giving two grays for about uh, 30 days or something like that, uh, 20 days or 30 days in fractionated radiation, uh, I feel radio surgery would easily be a uh, procedure of choice. Uh, you also showed a wonderful article from uh, that Canadian group by David Matthew, which had a great four vestibular schwannomas and the experience of uh, Nimhans over that. Sometimes we find uh, these uh, uh, large vestibular schwannomas as an incidental tumor also. So, uh, uh, how how do you counsel your patient for microsurgery versus radio surgery? And for these grade four vestibular schwannomas, uh, do you follow the planned partial resection followed by radio surgery? Yeah, it's a very important question, and, and it's very tricky also to do that. Like uh, for example, like uh, at present, uh, if you see a who's grade four uh, vestibular schwannoma, if a patient like uh, every patient's MRI looks different. So if a patient has a tight posterior fossa with uh, a negligent uh, CSF space is seen and there is a vestibular schwannoma sitting there. Even a uh, 2.5 mm uh, CC, 2.5 mm, uh, 2.5 CC vestibular schwannoma, or sorry, 2.5 centimeter vestibular schwannoma, I can tell that it is better to uh, remove it. But if there is a la large space uh, in the posterior fossa, CSF spaces are seen, even if it is a 3.5 centimeter uh, tumor, and even if the volume is around 20, 12 to 13 cc, I would be very happy to give radio surgery. That means to say that a patient's symptomatology is mainly dependent on the compression effects which the tumor uh, uh, gives. Even in our study, it was shown that a patients who have multiple cranial nerves as well as gait dysfunction had a worse outcome. That means to tell that those patients were those patients had tumors which caused compression and caused symptomatology. And if we give radiation for those patients, what happens is there will be transient swelling over time, six months to one year. It causes uh, it causes severe dysfunction of the patient. For ultimately, patient might choose radio surgery, surgery over radio surgery, and it will be termed as failure. Though those patients, if you can give antedema measures and uh, maintain for a while it can uh, decrease over time, but 
patients will have unbearable uh, uh, problems at that time so to tide over that crisis like we have to see cases where even if there is a transient increase of around uh, 15 to 20% of the tumor volume by seeing the scan if you can tell that even if there is some 15 to 20% of increase in tumor volume can occur patient should not have deficits if if with a reasonable conference i can tell that okay there is large space around the tumor and if even if there is necrosis and edema this uh, tumor might not cause symptomology to the patient then i would choose that okay this patient can uh, undergo radio surgery for example if a patient who has around 3 cm or 3.5 cm tumor with crowded cp angle still i would uh, or the patient has ataxia or multiple cranial palsy already uh, that means that it is better to err towards neurosurgery com- radio uh, microsurgery compared to radio surgery so uh, you you are actually talking about the pseudo progression which is seen in a Uh, some of these patients so there is no definite definition uh, in literature what should be called as a pseudo progression <laughs> when it's actually a radio surgery induced retinopathy but it happens but it happens in but all cases it, it happens yeah so uh, means uh, if you take a more than 10% increase in volume or more than 20% so that's a very individual criteria to define a pseudo progression in those patients it, it happens uh, in a few of my patients also the only time that we operate on them is that they have a clinical deterioration which is in synchrony with the radiological deterioration that's the only point when i say that okay let's go for a uh, surgical intervention otherwise if you just follow these patients you just sit tight and procrastinate over there you find that most of these patients do well over the course of time that Absolutely. might that's not a true tumor increase that's a radio surgery induced edema so some of your patients you showed that in your series uh, you had new deficits in five patients and in four patients you had to take a surgical intervention uh, did you find any difference in the surgery uh, in your intraoperative experience how was it different from a patient who does not who who was not subjected to radio surgery at first so is there any difference in these two cohorts primary radio surgery versus secondary radio surgery sort of patients so we have had this discussion uh, uh, in our uh, department as well so like i have operated personally only one patient who had who needed uh, surgery but uh, four of the three of uh, my colleagues have operated the rest of the cases like i have been personally there when they operated and i asked them what did they feel any uh, difference but according to them like uh, the tumor characteristics of vestibular schwannomas are so different in each case uh if, if you specifically ask for something it, it can be there so uh, but uh, compared to a regular vestibular schwannoma uh, i ha- they have uh, given a feedback that it was both firm uh, and less vascular so what about the arachnoid plane because that's your primary step when you yeah, yeah, yeah. take the arachnoid away from the tumor then you start dissecting yeah. over there so arachnoid, arachnoid gets plane radiated was when you get bad it. compared to yeah that was bad compared to a regular case uh, where arachnoid plane could be easily dissected i was told that like arachnoid plane was not so great but uh, that can be individual uh, <laughs> so arachnoid plane as such is known to be uh, not great in patients like we, uh, i have read one or two papers where they have operated after uh, radio surgery and they have seen histopathology and the neuro- usual neurosurgeon's feedback would be that uh, you know arachnoid plane was bad and uh, they had difficulty dissecting but uh, personal experience as well as uh, whatever i have uh, heard from other uh, surgeons uh, it was not all bad but uh, it was removed easily but compared to a regular uh, tumor arachnoid plane was uh, not so good but uh, it was more firm but less vascular okay so uh, any quick comment on uh, uh, quality of life and the cost comparison in patients who fall like a coos grade 2 coos grade 3 a small vestibular schwannoma so they can fall in either category that depends on uh, the surgeon's choice also sometimes whether it's a micro surgeon or a radio surgeon so uh, any comment on the quality of life and the cost incurred in these two techniques so uh, there are multiple studies which have shown that radio surgery is uh, the best practice uh, when you compare both the uh, quality of life as well as the money spent so uh, surgery 
as such uh, people might think that surgery is quite safe and uh, it's cheaper than uh, radio surgery but it's not uh, it depends on the country which they leave the availability of the surgeon availability of radio surgery as well but those studies which have been done in the west prove that radio surgery is the best and it ha- it is the best practice for especially for tumors which are uh, less than 3 uh, cm in size uh, the quality of life as well as uh, the cost incurred for the healthcare sector uh, was the cheapest in uh, radio surgery compared to both micro neuro surgery as well as they have uh, they've seen they've compared the serial scans and how much uh, quality of life was affected by patients who uh, ma- were managed conservatively even their quality of life was severely affected because of the anxiety and stuff so with that respect i think uh, radio surgery is uh, it maintains the middle path where you are not uh, causing harm as well as uh, you are uh, treating them uh, at a low cost and giving a good result you also showed an interesting case of which you published probably i missed that one uh, a bleeding inside a tumor after radio surgery and probably in the last uh, jns uh, some group also published their series on the post radio surgery bleeding in the vestibular schwannoma a quick comment on that so like it can happen uh, over <laughs> so much time so incidentally ours was uh, very quick like uh, it happened uh, within 4 or 5 days after uh, radio surgery uh we had given 12 gray with uh, very good t- uh, tumor coverage 50% isodos line not too much uh, radiation also uh but patient had deteriorated we initially managed conservatively we gave anti edema measures but uh, patient was feeling sick like uh, uh, there was no way that we could uh, conservatively manage that patient because patient had developed uh, uh, severe trigeminal neuralgia brain stem dysfunction because of ataxia as well as severe headache so no, no, surgically uh, it is uh, like uh, any tumor with bleed uh, even histopathology didn't show uh, anything great except that uh, schwannoma had bled uh, but it happened very early uh, compared to radio surgery compared to uh, people who have reported bleed uh, after radio surgery which has happened at various stages after uh, radio uh, radio surgery our case was very uh, early which is uh, that was a really? dramatic event in 4 days yeah sometimes i just really question that temporal sequence of events that just giving after the 4 days there how does uh, is it really because of a radio surgery induced bleed or patient had a hypertensive episode or something like that and that has caused the bleed so that's really uh, something which uh, which a question in my mind whether it's really a radio surgery induced or there is some other factor playing on there so like i have i had done uh, literature research on Uh, sporadically restoration of bleeding but it's quite rare uh, so it it radio surgery has uh, definitely something to do about it but i'm not sure what yeah but yours is a busy center and you do uh, since the you do nearly around 600 plus cases per year now with the i can this number is going to too much uh, much more than uh, 600 plus and in your own series you are seeing a first case with a bleeding in a previously irradiated vestibular schwannoma so i think that's going to be a pretty rare uh, case report uh, having said that i echo in your sentiments and in your opinion about radio surgery for the vestibular schwannoma that this is the state of the art now and especially for the coos grade 1 to 3 vestibular schwannomas its results are actually better than observation and microneuro surgery john uh, any question any comment Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you, uh, Nishant. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, as I mentioned to you before we started, uh, I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I do a lot of webcasts. And it just seems to me that uh, education is needed, not for patients, but for other neurosurgeons. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, as you know, it's, uh, it seems to be a dynamic field, changing. maybe some areas are getting more indications maybe getting less in some uh, but i certainly think that if a neurosurgeon is going to recommend it they know what it is uh, and uh, they can intel- intelligently discuss with the patient do, do you generally speaking do you see an increase in in the amount of gamma being used nowadays as as opposed to say 2 or 3 years ago definitely so uh over time we have seen uh, more uh, incident tumors like uh, patient goes with for a head injury get a scan 
then they find a small tumor inside uh, the internal acoustic meatus it's found to be um, uh, bisloshanoma they do hearing hearing is lost which patient might have uh, not noticed so it's a very common practice uh, in uh, maybe in a week at least two or three cases we see where there is a very small vesploshanomas which are which is incidentally detected uh, that means it is quite high like uh, we used to do uh, radio surgery for vesploshanomas used to be like uh, two or three cases per week earlier like uh, around a decade ago and now uh, we treat uh, two vesploshanomas per day that means that uh, there is uh, a massive increase in patients who require uh, gamma ray radio surgery which is predominantly a smaller vest trauma very good okay um, martin are you there we have a neurosurgeon from uh, dubai that he says he doesn't use it but he has a partner that does Mar- martin are you there I'd just like to have him comment if he's if he would yeah, yes yeah. I, yes, I, ahead, yes i am here yeah well um obviously these uh, colleagues from india have to be uh, commended for their uh, compilation of the data and the number of cases they're doing and so i don't want to argue with their data one thing i do miss in this whole discussion is like how hard are these data because <clears throat> even back in the days when you know microsurgery was the one and only option there was still a, a debate um, uh, you know uh, sh- schwannomas have an unpredictable growth pattern and we all know that and so that's where the wait and see came in and then also um, so so how ha- how hard are these figures i mean what what was the volume of a norwegian study saying asymptomatic uh, small tumors should be uh, treated with gamma knife up front how many cases was that and that that is one question i would put in and the other one being um uh, have you seen any malignant transformation i mean what 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 the indian colleagues are saying here is it reminds me very much of a discussion we had in 99 with uh, sami in 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 a uh, uh, meeting in in fosto iguazu and the, the the people from from the us came in and you know, and there were basically two factions, those who had the gamma knife and those who didn't. <laughs> so, so yes, uh, malignant transformation. And what about the role of age? Now, if you have an elderly patient, 75, let's say, you know, and um, does he really need, uh, I mean, it might well be that the, the acoustic doesn't grow anymore. It's not significant anymore. What about the age selection? What 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 is your attitude there? So, uh, if I can answer right now, uh, for example, a patient with uh, a 75-year-old with a small intracanicular vestibular schwannoma, uh, you can as well uh, wait and watch if uh, hearing is not a great problem. But there are uh, not only one study; there are multiple studies which show that if a patient has uh, severe tinnitus or imbalance, even that gets better with radio surgery. If that patient who is old and uh, even if it is debilitated, you can reasonably uh, take a decision to observe the patient if you feel that uh, it's not causing a great problem or hearing is not a concern for that patient. But uh, like there are certain indications where uh, patient might have severe tinnitus, it, it's been uh, recorded over time and uh, in multiple studies, tinnitus decreases, dizziness decreases with the radiation as well. And uh, then coming to the how uh, dependable or uh, reproducible the data or whatever is available. Is. So uh, like, uh, I, I will tell you one typical example of whether to uh, observe or uh, operate a low-grade glioma uh, we got uh, from about maybe some 50 or 60 patients from uh, Finland. So like the Norwegian studies uh, which come out have have been regarded as uh, uh, a gold mine because they have a very good follow-up and uh, the follow-up is very clean and uh, the data is dependable. Uh, so th- that's what is the overall uh, 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 or thinking about uh, the uh, data which is already uh, published and uh, the details in the, the uh, detail to which they have uh, followed up those patients with 
a very regular uh, uh, audiometries and regular scans i think uh, you have to uh, give good weightage uh, for uh, depending on that data uh, like it's uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, 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 doing the same study in a very big center like if it can be done in a very big center like hard data can be uh, produced any time but uh, due to lack of funding and stuff like i think those are not reproducible those studies are not re- reproducible very easily uh, but uh, the data whatever is available for uh, management of small vestibular schwannomas is pretty uh, hard and uh, it's uh, reproduced in multiple studies uh, i showed as i showed it is not like one study like i i showed at least 10 slides which supports radio surgery uh in terms of uh, progressive hearing in terms of hearing preservation in terms of decreasing the amount in which hearing uh, uh, is lost over time uh so uh, it's it's pretty evident in the uh, studies that they have uh, done their best to uh, show uh, what happens uh martin uh, i agree to nishant and can i just comment on your question if john permits to it go ahead so a uh, uh, wait and watch observation versus gamma knife is actually a question which is uh, lurking in the mind everywhere and it's a very debatable question uh, in uh, just 3 years ago cns consensus guidelines were published when they did all the meta analysis for the last 20 30 years which included the studies on the natural history on observations on proactive gamma knife versus gamma knife and it was given with a documented growth so they found a level to evidence that in an incidentally detected vestibular schwannoma observation is a valid option yes you can go with it but it comes at a cost of risk to the hearing that risk is definitely going to be there even for a grade one vestibular schwannomas you have a cohort your question is very valid when the patient is 75 years old so they made a criteria and in this criteria they found that if the age is less than 60 years and the tumor is in the literal position of the internal auditory canal it's a canal so sometimes we find a tumor which is more towards the cistern and sometimes we find which is more towards the literal part deep inside the canal so age less than 60 years tumor literally inside the canal and the hearing loss of grade 2 more than 30 decibel or 25 decibel hearing loss presence of tinnitus these are the indicators which show that the patient have a tumor which uh, which is probably going to progress over the course of time in a 75 years old with a grade 1 hearing loss observation is a very valid option though it comes at a risk of loss to the hearing but it's a very valid option and it can be offered to the patient it's the patient's choice whether they want to undergo surgery or uh, gamma knife for observation and observation remains a very uh, very a uh, reasonable option in these patients your second question about the malignant transformation malignant transformation of a vestibular schwannoma has been reported in the literature but those patients are mostly neurofibromatosis type 2 patients these are not usually sporadic vestibular schwannomas and if two patients yes they have a slightly higher chance of malignant transformation of the vestibular schwannomas but in sporadic vestibular schwannoma this transformation is a very rare entity and its incidence has been reported to be less than 0.01%. Very good. Okay, uh w- this is not going to be a long presentation and I really appreciate the time and the shot taking uh, and also uh Manjul to be able to moderate while driving. Uh that shows the dedication of a neurosurgeon uh, uh the, the, <laughs> they get to education even when they're in the car which is great they got busy these guys are busy these guys are very busy and you know uh, what we're going to do on the shop we're going to have a webcast in hindi because we want to reach we want to reach more people more more patients in, in their language and uh, we'll let you know when we're doing that if you would like to come and martin i'd like to thank you uh, for participating and uh, we look forward to the next webcast okay nish uh, any parting words uh, nishant thank you very much for this opportunity i i hope uh, more people benefit from uh, whatever discussion happens here thank you very much okay very thank good thank you nishant okay gentlemen thank you have a good day thank you thank you everyone good day bye bye thank you bye bye